Hello again, it's Will, and uh, it's been a while since my last video, so I thought I might as well get to make another one today so that I look like I'm doing, I'm actually doing something productive for a change. So, yeah, like I said, said it has been a really long time, and as you can tell, obviously, by the, uh, title in the video that I am going to be reviewing then none other than everyone's favourite steam locomotive in the world and that is the Flying Scotsman. This is the Hornby Flying Scotsman but this is the blue Hornby Flying Scotsman. I'll be reviewing the uh, Thomas the Tank Engine Flying Scotsman from the Hornby range for another time but Let's skip all that and let's get on to the review. Now, time to discuss what I actually like about this model or what I might not like about it, whether I will discuss it or not. Anyways, now, once you put Flying Scotsman in his blue livery on the track, he actually is a smooth runner. When you, when you get him to pull trucks and coaches, etc. and stuff. So, yeah, I have tested him out before and he is a really smooth runner. If you guys will remember, a few years back, I got this for my birthday when I was just turning 21 years old. If you guys will remember, I... Got this for my birthday many years ago, and I can remember before I had this, I I laid eyes on it on like a uh, uh, comic, I think it was. No, it was a magazine. First time I saw this, it was on a magazine, and I was like, I want to get this, and here it is today, the Hornby Blue Livery Flying Scotsman. Now... What I like about this model is that it has a ton of detail, all painted in British Railways blue. To be honest, I'm sure everyone might or might not have seen Flying Scotsman in blue before. And he does, he does have no face, obviously, because this is not Thomas related, which... It would be pretty cool if it was, but I just prefer to keep this with no face. This is like, this is a new version, obviously, because he has no coupling or whatever you want to call it. This connector thing at the front, whereas if the back of the tender does, which is uh, pretty unusual. Well, I've seen it before with uh, models like uh, Silverlink and uh, Mallard, but with Flying Scotsman, I'm not sure whether this is uh, from now on or temporary. I don't know. He does uh, have sprung buffers, which I like about Hornby models. Hornby models have sprung buffers, and, they, and that's one of my... Main reasons I like, love Hornby so much from when I was a kid and stuff. So, yeah, this is really how much I like Hornby. Yeah, what I like about this model is that it has such a great uh, uh, detail. Has a great detail on the name plates and name plaques. If you can look at it closely. There. That should be close enough. Right. Um. You know, it has a ton of details, which I like the look of. And to be honest, I have a feeling there might not might not be something wrong with this. If there was, I would let you know at any time in the video. But the Flying Scotsman does have lots of details. As you can see, they've 
Hornby have done a good job on his numbers, like uh, 60103. And as you guys may have noticed, that the tender is uh, the same, is in the same shape, but has no corridor at the back, unlike the uh, Thomas Flying Scotsman's tender, which is really odd because. The Flying Scotsman isn't the Flying Scotsman without the uh, corridor at the back of his tender, isn't he? And I love the detail on the, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, British Railways logo, which is fantastic. If you guys will remember, I did make a uh, custom-made Trackmaster 2 British Railways Flying Scotsman, but it wasn't in this livery, it was in a dark green British Railways livery, and I was happy with it at the time, but I am thinking of making some modifications to it, or make a uh, uh, original Trackmaster version of it, I'm not sure when, but I'm still planning to do that in many years time what i think what i think about this model is that uh, it has so many details i have no so many details that i have no complaints with it whatsoever what i like about it was the packaging which is the uh, box that it came with I really like the uh I really like the box that came with it and stuff that shows it being limited edition and stuff like with King Edward the Second, which I reviewed a while back. And and the reason I wanted this was because I wanted uh to have like a blue and blue British Railways engine collection in my Hornby collection and stuff. So there you have it. That's why I chose the uh, Hornby Blue Tornado and I mean the Hornby uh, Flying Scotsman in the first place. The reason I said Hornby Blue Tornado is because I'm planning to review her next and stuff. So, yeah. Sorry about that. So. Okay, final thoughts. Should you two get the... Should you too, or anyone, get this model or not, if you really are taking such a fascinating look at this model and want it so bad before it hits high prices, I suggest you all get it before it hits high prices, because like I said in my King Edward II review video a while back, Hornby trains and Backman trains are very, very expensive if you're not careful at trying to get them at cheaper prices. So, I would recommend getting them earlier before they become expensive. So, be it's always best to play it sa safe than sorry. So, yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I would like to see if you guys would leave it a thumb, leave a comment or give it a thumbs up. I absolutely love the... Hornby Blue Livery Flying Scotsman and I think it was the best review that I could uh, give to you all so in uh, many year years or months or weeks or days or in many videos to come I'll be back again with more Hornby and Backman Train video review, uh, vid review videos 